This is the Cubase version of our parallel compression. It gives a really good thickness to your drum tracks, uh, your vocal tracks, gives this good close quality. Today we'll be doing it on some drum tracks, just a drum group, something simple and easy for you guys to uh, catch on. If you use Pro Tools, check out the Pro Tools version of this. We will be doing a Cubase Center Pro Tools version and hopefully that'll cover enough bases for everyone else who's on Reaper and Logic and Samplitude and Sonar and whatever else you guys use. So let's get started. Let's get started properly. Here's a quick, quick, quick Cubase project that I slapped together some uh, musicians that I'm working with right now. This is just the drum tracks. Nothing too ridiculous there. Uh, just simple drum setup. I've got nothing going on in our plugins at all. No verb, no effects, no nothing at all. We're going to keep it simple just so you can hear what we're doing today. So let's give these drums some more beefiness. And remember, this can be applied to anything. I love it on drums. Bass, I've never used it. Give it a try. Why not? There's no rules here. Vocals are awesome. First thing is we need to create a bus and an aux. So in Cubase, the way to do it is we will go and add a group channel track. We want it stereo because we have our drum tracks in stereo, our overheads are in stereo, toms are panned a bit, nothing scientific, just a bit left and a bit right. And Bosch, there we go. Group track, let's call this Drum Parallel Compression. Just calling it Drum Pair Comp. Can't get simpler than that. Let's bring our mixer across so we can see what we're doing. So here's our Parallel Compression track. This is our aux track and, and uh, Pro Tools, you'd be setting up an aux track and sending a bus there. What we want to do first is we want to send all of our tracks, let's hide the ins and the outs. One sec. Let's get that there, get that out of there. All right. We want to send all of the drum tracks to our group track. The easiest way to do that is go take your send group. Turn on. Let's see if this... No, nope, can't do that here. All right. Too bad. I wanted to cheat and copy it across. I'm sure there's a way if we hit Alt Shift. There we go. Okay. So Alt on the Mac, actually, Option Shift, and it sets up across the board. All your selected tracks, you'll set everything up properly. I'm going to put this here. I'm not going to worry about being too accurate. So now we have the sends off of each track going to our group track here. They're all coming out at the same level. Why? Because we have the sends going post fader. We don't have to worry about sending separate levels because the faders on our actual track on our channel are affecting how much goes into our parallel compression group. Nothing else has changed in the edit window. Let's go back to our mixer. And let's set up an insert into our group. I'll just use the basic. I prefer to use UAD plugins for this, the 1176. But for now, since everyone's got it, I'll just use the basic compressor. Oop, wrong one. I'll use the basic compressor from Cubase. Analysis, down to peak. We want this to just react to everything we send it. Release, we want to bring it down quite a lot. We want the compressor to release quickly to let the rest of the body of the tone of the sound come out. Uh, attack, I like to keep my attack quite quick here. Hardeny, ratio up higher. We want to slam this thing like no one's business. Personally, that's how I like it. Your mileage may vary. Do whatever you want. Adjust to how you want. That's part of the fun of running your own studio. 
Okay, so let's take our mixer and put it aside for now so you can see what else we're doing here. I'm going to take the track, the drum parallel compression track down to nothing and press play. We're not getting nearly as much gain reduction on the compressor as I'd like. I want it to slam like, like, I can't even tell you how much. We'll bring the threshold down a bit more. Bring the makeup a bit more. Now I'm gonna keep playing it back. I'm gonna loop it and have a listen to what happens as soon as I start bringing up the parallel compression track here. I hope you can hear the difference. I'm not sure. I'm using headphones so I don't get too much feedback on the mic, but I hate mixing a headphones. I'm going to turn my uh, control room speakers back up. Give me one sec. Because I want to hear what's going on. So I'm going to A and B bypass this group track here, the parallel compression. We'll have a listen and I'll switch it on and off. Hopefully you guys can hear what the difference is. Now it hasn't just gotten louder, it's gotten fuller as well. I'm gonna make the really, uh, that's why I like the 1176. I like the way it reacts to transients. I like the way it releases, but we're just using this compressor for now. So you could get the theory behind what we're doing here. I'm gonna turn it up just a bit more, turn up some of the parallel compression track just a bit more so you could hear even more drastically what the difference is. I'll turn it off. You can hear how it works even on the snare. You hear more of the snare rattle. But you notice how the transients aren't getting louder because we have our attack so quick. We're not letting the transients come in and, you know, making everyone's ears bleed. All we're doing is letting the rest of the body of the snare and the drums to come through to fill up that space. And that's the end of that. That's how easy it is. Let that run through the whole song. Excuse me. Some people even like to put an EQ on there afterwards and do the, you know, the disco smile. So scoop out the middle, put more bass, put more treble, uh, lows and highs, and even give it that much more sauce. Have a great day.